super hard to whisk matcha without a whisk. What's up, sis? First of all, this video is not sponsored. <laughs> So last week I asked you guys to send in some questions so that we could do this little mukbang moment and that's what we're gonna do today. So first of all, drinks girl, I made this matcha tea. I put way too much matcha in it. You're gonna see my face contort every time that I take a sip. We got this kombucha, it's lavender melon. That's to help me with the food, which we'll get to in a second. And then we have um, some water, cause stay hydrated. We've got some rice and my staple food, chicken nuggets chicken that's literally all that i eat and these vegetables that a friend gave us okay so the very first question is what languages do you speak uh english when i was in france i spoke french i've studied japanese for about 10 years very lazily i gave up trying to learn the language and just started listening to the language a lot so my language comprehension is pretty good my senses formulation is trash question number two not a question your characters are the bomb.com and i'm making art for it even if you don't want it thank you i do want it question number three how do you create stories for your characters how i tend to make stories is i make a lot of comics and the characters write themselves i write the character backstories blah 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 then I make the comics and then the story comes out of that. These characters that you guys are like super excited about currently, Eleanor and Devin, I didn't have a story for them for 10 fucking years. I actually asked Pete Doctor about this at school one time and he gave me the best advice that I've ever gotten on it, which is that there are two kinds of storytelling, outside in and inside out. What that means is that the world can affect your story by imposing itself on your character and that can make a story by making the character grow. You can also have a character who grows and that affects the story and the world outside of them. If you make a character first, it's going to be inside out. If you make a world first and a story, it's going to be outside in and that's always going to be easier. I struggled with these characters for 10 fucking years. One day I woke up, I made an Instagram post about it and somehow it had solidified in my head. I don't know how. Next question. Are you a self-taught artist or did you or do you take classes for your art? Little known fact about me, just kidding, literally everyone who knows me knows this. I went to Catholic school my entire life. I was supposed to be a super high achieving intelligent kid. Um, art was not actively encouraged. I was entirely self-taught up until I went to CalArts and then I took classes. I did take a life drawing class when I was 19 after I came back from France because I really wanted to go to art school and I needed life drawing for the Cal High's portfolio. I took one art class in college. I walked in there, they were drawing those spheres with lighting on them. I went, no, I'm past this, and I stopped doing it. And that is why, boys and girls, I still can't draw form to this day. Don't skip your foundations, please. I still don't know perspective. Blue or pink? Both. Where are the avocados at? In my stomach. If Appa was the last air bison, why were there so many babies in The Legend of Korra? Listen. Don't talk to me about The Legend of Korra. I watched all of Avatar like three months ago and then I watched the first three episodes of Legend of Korra and I stopped watching because I was extremely disappointed. Come for me, I dare you. By the way, I hate Katara. Come for me, I dare you. Are you vegan? Yes. What's your biggest pet peeves? I hate uh, people talking shit about other people. Now, of course I do it <laughs> and have done it. Lauren Hill is just a human as they say, but I hate that in me too, so I try not to do it. What are your roots? Uh, many varied and far apart. My parents took a DNA test each separately, so I never have to take a DNA test. It's exactly what we thought. Island people from the Pacific Ocean, generally. I was raised Filipino. I come from a Filipino family. I found out when I was probably like 18 years old that I'm actually not that fucking Filipino. My dad happens to be the only Filipino in his family who did not marry a Filipino. My mom comes from a lot of different islands. She is originally from the island of Guam. I've never been, I really wanna go. You seem so close with your brother. How is it living apart? Hard. My little brother is a competitive Smash gamer. He plays a lot of D&D. &D. He's super funny and super cool. He likes memes a lot and he just taught me all about the dark web recently, which was really interesting and really cool. Thanks, little brother. I used to tell people my brother is my favorite person, place, or thing. That hasn't changed. My brother is still my favorite person, place, or thing. He's struggling right now. I try and help him, but as an older sibling, there's really only so much you can do and they gotta figure out the rest. So, baby brother, I'm rooting for you. I'll always have you back. If you need anything, I'm trying to get rich for us so that uh, I can pull you out, bro. Next question, how did you develop your art style? I have a whole video on this. I'll link it below. These people just put cues in here because I put drop a cue. Yo, funny. Do you post comics? Yes, I post comics. I post them to my Instagram. I used to post them to a Tumblr. Tumblr's dead and we all know it. So check my Instagram if you want to see my comics. Are you baby or monkey? Neither. What, in your opinion, is an absolute jam? Rhiannon by Fleetwood Mac. The only jam that I ever need in my life. What's your favorite type of color? Dusty. Favorite game? Overcooked 2. That shit? Oh, I'm playing through that shit right now. Oh, there's a level where you get to make Chinese food? Oh! Aside from that, I love Luigi's Mansion because I play it with my brother. My brother used to be really scared of ghosts, so he'd make me 
play for him and then he would tell me where to go and what to do and then he would cover his eyes occasionally but i tried to play bioshock again recently and made me really sick because i was playing civ 5 we were playing hades and battle right a lot and those are all top down games and so when i tried to do the like this thing got real sick real quick let me tell you why does justin have small quads this is my cousin justin are you going to be here for my birthday this is my cousin monica uh, i haven't been here for her birthday in seven years monica no i'm not going to be here for your birthday i'll insert a picture of the only time i was there for monica's birthday she had just taken sleeping pills because she was going to take a, an exam for nursing school here's what that looked like I was there, bitch. You can't tell me I wasn't there. How do you stay positive when life is hard? I will make an entire separate video about this because that's a really important question and that's a really good question and it's got a long answer. How do you feel your identity as an artist affects your true identity? I think my identity is an artist. I don't think I have a true identity outside of that. I don't Honestly, I don't think I have a true identity at all. I'm ever changing, I'm ever in flux based on the choices that I make. That's how I think about myself. That's how I think about life in general. It's all your reactions and your portrayals of yourself based on the thoughts that are going on in your mind and what you choose to act upon. Does that make sense? If you ask me a deep question, I'm gonna give you a deep answer, bitch. Are we going to see you at Dennis the Dinosaur sometime? Fun fact, I almost made an entire YouTube series called Dennis the Dinosaur. It's a lot of work. It took me six months of 10 hours a day animating to do that six minute short Dennis the Dinosaur. If you want to see Dennis, any video that I make with my friend Christian, that is Dennis the Dinosaur. He just came through. That's exactly who Christian is all the time. What music do you listen to? Folk and Doja Cat. Aside from that, Pup. I love the band Pup. In my house, we stand Jeff Rosenstock and Laura Stevenson, Chris Farad and Antarctica Vespucci. We don't like ska here. I just found out what ska was. I just found out actually that I didn't know ska was a thing. I just thought that back in the time that ska was popular, everybody was super into bowling. The only ska we stand is ska to network, who I will link below because he's amazing. Pets. I have one baby cat. His name is Tom Sawyer. Gay. Yes. This question just says gay with an E. Yes, I'm gay with an E. I think we're all gay with an E. Not not full gay. I'm married to a man. Uh, most of my long-term relationships have been with men. I don't think any of them have ever felt insecure about it, but I don't think it's a big deal because I don't think that anyone could ever be straight. But that might be my, my not straight brain telling me that. Who inspired your art? Bill Watterson. All my storytelling, I ripped 100% from Bill Watterson. He's a genius. And Charles Schultz, early Charles Schultz, when he did those peanuts from like 1952 to 1954. My shit, man. This question says, oh, so why are you in a cabin again? Because I was in LA for 10 fucking years and I'm not an LA person. I'm from San Francisco. San Francisco is super hippie, super liberal, super, we're all friends with each other, big smiles. It's changed obviously since I was a kid, now that we've got a lot of tech companies up there. It's really changed. That's that on that. LA is not the city for me. And that's that on that. This Atlantic Ocean, by the way, let's talk for a second. Atlantic Ocean? Who do you think you are? I was under the impression that the Atlantic Ocean was just a bathtub full of piss water, that there were no waves. I went out to Virginia Beach a couple weeks ago. Those waves crashed me into the fucking ground. I was like, here I go, I'm body surfing, I'm an island girl, I get it. I got injured, boy, I got injured. So. I'm actually enjoying my time out here in the Atlantic Ocean. It's pretty good so far. This person wants me to talk about my CalArts experience and about the portfolio and sketchbook I submitted. I lost the sketchbook I submitted. I think it is actually a really good example because my sketchbook was a fucking mess. It was all scribbles and all notes, like writing notes. I think they actually let me in because they believed in my writing, which ended up being a good decision because my writing was the thing that I was strongest at at that school. But here's the thing, I'm not qualified to tell you if you're gonna get into CalArts or not. I don't know what they're looking for, bro. I'm graduated, I'm a year out. I was never on the acceptance board. I don't know if you're gonna get in. I can tell you if you work really hard, you won't need CalArts. CalArts is really, really good for exposure and for connections and for getting you in with people, but a lot of kids I know dropped out and went straight into the industry. I know a lot of people also who didn't go to CalArts. I can tell you about my experience though. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. Overall, good. Especially as it got later. My third and fourth years were way better than my first and second years. But a lot of that is my fault. There's some tea. There's some juicy tea. Maybe I'll talk about it. It's kind of... Maybe I'll talk about it. Okay girl, I think that's that on that and i hope that answered a lot of your questions if you've got any more questions for me leave them below and i'll do my best to answer them until i see you next time please make sure to girl the camera cut out but as i was saying until we meet again please remember to love your neighbor people plants and animals to take a meatless monday and to 
uh, get out in nature sometime today if you're watching this at 3 a.m. sometime this week because it's real good for you and you're gonna like it. Um, <laughs> okay, bye.